There's Rachel Carlson and Kathy Blazer. If you could come forward. And if you could please limit your testimony to a minute and a half. We we need to get to member discussion, so thank you. Yes, um, Madam Chair, did you mean Renee Carlson? I'm Renee Carlson. Oh, okay. I have Rachel on here, but I will change that. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, members. Um, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the committee. My name is Renee Carlson. I serve as general counsel for True North Legal, where we represent religious individuals and religious organizations. Members, it is neither unreasonable nor unpopular to believe there is a moral duty to protect human life, even at its earliest stages of development. As recognized by the United States Supreme Court, quote, whatever one thinks about abortion, it cannot be denied that there are common and respectable reasons for opposing it, other than hatred, condescension toward, or indeed, any view at all concerning women as a class, end quote. Yet Senate File 3967's insurance mandate would force employers whose deeply held religious beliefs forbid them from being complicit in abortion to pay for abortion. As drafted, this bill can only represent a legislative determination that the religious beliefs of employers who do not wish to fund abortions are unworthy of protections. But the free exercise clause of religion extends to decisions regarding abortion, even with regard to insurance mandates as proposed in this bill. In Hobby Lobby v. Burwell, the United States Supreme Court refused to allow a federal agency to instruct a private entity about the correctness of its beliefs. It struck down the HHS regulation requiring business owners to provide health insurance coverage for their employees when doing so conflicted with the business owner's religious beliefs about abortion. The court made clear that conscience rights, including rights of business owners, may not be infringed in this way. Though Hobby Lobby was decided under RIFRA, this bill would arguably have to survive the same strict scrutiny analysis, and it's doubtful a law infringing on clearly established legal protections for rights of conscience would survive this test. The Thank state you. of you Minnesota can, could do better by seeking to achieve its goals without forcing its citizens to choose between disobeying the law and violating their sincerely held religious beliefs. You have an amendment before you to consider that could mitigate this um, issue here before us today. I've also submitted written testimony for the record. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, Ms. Blazer, 